Hey, this is Dave with Taboo Customs. This video here, we are working on a 2011 Chevy 1500, getting ready to do some frame rust repair to the Chevy. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna remove the fuel tank. So in this video, we're gonna cover how to go through removing the fuel tank in the 2011 Chevy 1500 extended cab. All right, so we've already disconnected the uh, ground on the battery, and I do re recommend doing that because we are going to have to disconnect the some of the uh, electrical wiring here, and you certainly don't want any uh, sparks, not that necessarily that would normally occur with disconnecting these, but anyway, uh, we've got to disconnect the battery anyway to do the welding, so we went ahead and did that. Now, the next step is we're going to remove this plastic cover here, so there's three bolts. There's three bolts here underneath the the frame uh, these are 13 millimeter bolts pull out those three bolts there then on this side there's these little clips that as this swings down we should be able to pick this plastic uh, guard up out of those clips to remove it Now the next step we're going to talk about is actually working on dealing with the filler hoses. Now there's a few options to this. You could disconnect these filler hoses at the tank, but you really have no way of seeing back in there what you're doing. You can disconnect them up at the filler neck underneath the body, but we'll show you in a second why. Uh, that also might be difficult. What we will often do in removing these fuel tanks is we'll go ahead it's only three screws to go ahead and remove the metal filler neck here, get it loose, and uh, we'll either leave that filler neck on with the hoses or we'll deal with it once it's loose because it's a lot easier to deal with it with it loose. Now these three screws here are seven millimeter uh, OEM, so if you have those, uh, they should be seven millimeter. Now we do recommend going ahead and putting some sort of uh, relatively clean rag there to make sure that you don't drop anything down in the filler neck while you're doing this. All right, now to show you why we couldn't remove the uh, filler hoses from the filler tube here, uh, this hose clamp here the the uh it's pointed up at the body and with that connected that was basically right up on the body so there's no way to get to this hose clamp it's a pretty similar situation with this one up here so we really did need to loosen this filler neck to get to that now <clears throat> we have a couple of options we can go ahead and remove these hoses actually we probably will remove these from the filler neck or you could leave this filler neck attached but it can be difficult because this is metal and it doesn't really isn't going to give to fish that over the frame while you're dropping the tank so it is a little bit easier to just have the hoses because they will kind of move and they're easier to move around now if you do leave the filler neck on remember you do have some things that are still attached such as this ground wire this hose here which runs up to the evap system and you would have to disconnect or clip those or disconnect this to leave this filler neck attached but as i said we're going to go ahead now and remove these hose clamps basically with these we'll remove the hose clamps twist the hose to break the uh, connection between the two and then we should be able to pull those off all right so as you can see with it loose a lot easier to work on uh when we get it down here what we're going to do is we're going to pop this hose off put a flat screwdriver under here just a little breather I believe goes to the fuel tank as well now we're going to remove the hose clamp for the smaller a uh, hose here on this truck it's actually a quarter inch drive that fits that the best get that hose clamp loose break it off the hose and we'll try to turn that hose and if the hoses have been on a long time they can be a pain all right now we've left the big hose to last usually because it's the hardest so we'll go ahead Take off that hose clamp on this truck, eight millimeter driver for the clamp. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take that clamp and just slide it down on the filler. Um, we're also gonna clip this 
zip tie here just to get it out of the way. It'll help us to uh, be able to turn this anyway. Now we've got to break that hose loose and it can sometimes really be a pain. Might have to take a flat screwdriver or a pick, try to slide it up underneath it just to get it to start to break loose. If you want to reuse the hose, you really don't want to pry on it a lot and start breaking the uh, you know inner uh, sections of the hose. All the uh, little cords and wires run through there. You can grab a pair of channel locks, try to get a better grip on it. Just be careful you don't crush the filler tube. Now, before we let this hose go, we're actually gonna go ahead and try to clean a lot of the crap that just came off the filler neck out of the hose. Mainly because we don't want it all going in the field neck. Once we get it cleaned up, we're going to go ahead put a rag in it. Just make sure we don't get any smuts down in the tank. Now, of course, be careful you don't put the rag too far down. You want to get, you're going to want to be able to get it out. Now, this breather hose here, we're going to go ahead and stick a bolt in the end of it. Same thing, just make sure uh, nothing gets down in there. We'll go ahead and Probably resecure this filler neck back up to the body in a second when we lower the truck. Okay, so now we're at the front of the fuel tank. Right back here is the fuel tank. There's a little evap canister here. We're actually going to work on uh, disconnecting a couple of things here. One, we've got this connection to the evap canister down here. Then we'll work on our fuel line connection, which is actually uh, the one up here. So down here, this little evap canister, one twist it a little bit, make sure it's broke loose. Then it has two tabs that basically uh, are pushing against a piece here. Now, I think you're supposed to be able to pinch that and basically twist and pull back and it should pull right off. If you have to, you might have to slip a screwdriver in there, pull one of those tabs off. You can do the tabs one at a time if you're really careful, um, but it is somewhat difficult. Now on the fuel fitting up here, there's actually a little blue clip that if you, it's basically a U-shaped clip, fits over uh, inside this plastic fitting. Again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, twist it a little bit just to make sure it's broke loose. And then we will try to push those two tabs together and out and see if we can get it. We probably can't by hand, but we'll try. Take a little screwdriver. I need to get a pick. Get under the blue tab and pull up. It'll pop up like that. Now, be careful you're not under it whenever you pull this loose because chances are you, you, there's going to be a little bit of pressure behind it and you're going to have some fuel spray and leaks. So be sure you got something to clean that up. All right. Would have been a good thing to mention at the beginning, probably, but uh, obviously, if you're going to do this, it's best to run your fuel tank down as far as you can. Um, 
so that this step is is easier but right now we're ready to go ahead and and remove the straps to hold the fuel tank up and then we can start removing the uh, electrical connections on top of it it is really hard to get up there and see those electrical connections up here with the fuel tank up so high so we will try to drop it down you have quite a bit of slack in that harness now we of course are on a lift you will probably be you know, potentially on the ground you know we have used a floor jack with a large flat plate with a, a dowel welded into it so it fits down the floor jack you know you can use a transmission type jack we of course have our lift jack here uh, that we use for several things now um, it's difficult we want to strap this tank to this jack because it is so big so long you definitely want to secure it as best you can but since we can't really get a strap along here very easily what we did is and since i'm by myself as well we go ahead we we put some straps here that are a little bit loose so that when we pull these straps off we can hang it from these straps move it around a little bit slide it over a little bit run our straps over the tank and get it secured to this so that we can go ahead and start lowering a little bit more now to remove these straps move these straps there's basically two bolts this one's easy to see 15 millimeter bolts now one thing that can occur with these bolts is that these cross members like to rust out so there's a chance this bolt may not come out um, cleanly now this truck is not too bad with rust so i'm hoping they'll come out uh, the other one is actually oh gonna be hard to see but right up there obviously so we'll pull those two basically pull the straps down then on this side there's just slots that they'll pop up be able to pull those straps out not too difficult they come out pretty easy now remember when you go to put this back together these straps are two different lengths you can see here the length of that versus the length of that don't get them crossed one probably won't fit anyway if you did get them crossed but keep yourself from some headache on the ground just to make sure you prep it right All right, so one thing about running the straps up over the tank here is make sure you go under any hoses, under any of those uh, wire harnesses up there. You don't want to strap over top of them, uh, especially wire harness because we're going to disconnect that, hoses because you don't want to crush them. Um, and then kind of crank it down. And now we go ahead, lower it down enough so we can get to that wiring on the top. <laughs> All right, as you see, you can, you've got a lot of play in this harness here, so you can bring it down quite a ways. Two connectors down here, pretty easy. Hard to do one-handed. Pushing the tab, wiggle them a bit, pulling them out. I'm gonna put the camera down to do it, but anyway, pretty simple, typically. All right, so the fuel tank is out now. To put the fuel tank back in, basically just a reverse of everything uh, we just did there. Now, we are getting ready to do a bunch of rust repair on this truck. Well, not a bunch. Actually, this truck is not that bad. It really only had one or two spots in the frame, in the very old bottom of the frame, that we didn't expect to, to find. So, looks like we'll be replacing a cross member as well. So, watch out for those videos. We'll have several videos on different kits that we're going to have for repairing the frames on the Chevy truck. So, 
check those out. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment here on the video or email us at dave at tabucustoms.com. If you're looking for kits for rust repair or skid plates or anything else, you can also visit tabucustoms.com and find all those there. And thank you for watching. As always, like and subscribe. Greatly appreciated. See ya.